Hey friends, this is FI here. Welcome back to another amazing video. So this time I thought let's do something really, really different. Okay. So uh, I need around 10 to 15 minutes of your time maximum. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to watch Warren Buffett's, one of the first Warren Buffett's interviews ever. Okay. So all of us know Warren Buffett. He's one of the greatest investors of all times. So we can call him Warren Buffet or Warren Buffett. Uh, I call him Warren Buffett. Okay. So uh, we, we not only learn things about investing from him, but we also get to know uh, a lot of other things about life. Okay. So are you guys ready? If you guys are ready, let's watch it together. Now for this, a simple requirement is make sure that you have a pen or a pencil and have a nice sheet of paper where you can write down a few notes, right? If at all you have not had any of this right now, just pause this video, bring it, sit down Aram say, and make sure that you watch this video. So let's let's try to watch it till the end. Let's make some notes. And then probably then I'll see that if we can have an exercise, a small homework for all of us to do, and then uh, probably it'll work out really well. Okay. All right, then let's begin the video. Okay, friends, here we go. Others with a more secular approach who have also been very successful. Let's take Warren Buffett of Omaha, Nebraska. If you had put $10,000 in 1965 into his company, Berkshire Hathaway, you would have one million today. Warren was a chapter in my 1972 book, Super Money, so I've known him a long time. He learned his trade with Ben Graham, the original dean of security analysis at Columbia University. I don't think Warren has ever been on television until this interview, and he has certainly never courted publicity, but recently he got a lot of it when he emerged as the key figure in the takeover of ABC by Capital Cities. Warren will be the largest shareholder of the new company, and his own net worth is now far in excess of $500 million. But when I spoke with him last fall in his office in Omaha, he very characteristically made his investment style seem so perfectly simple. The first rule on investment is don't lose. And the second rule on investment is don't forget the first rule. And that's all the rules there are. I mean, that uh, if you buy things for far below what they're worth and you buy a group of them, you basically don't lose money. Warren, what do you consider the most important quality for an investment manager? It's a temperamental quality, not an intellectual quality. You, you don't need tons of IQ in this business. I mean, you have to have enough IQ to get from here to downtown Omaha, but, uh, but uh, you do not have to be able to play three-dimensional chess or, or be in the top leagues in terms of bridge playing or something of the sort. Uh, you need a stable personality. You need a temperament that neither derives great pleasure from being with the crowd or against the crowd, because this is not a business where you take polls. It's a business where you think. And Ben Graham would say that you're not right or wrong because a thousand people agree with you. And you're not right or wrong because a thousand people disagree with you. You're right because your facts and your reasoning are right. Warren, what do you do that's different than 90% of the money managers who are in the market? Certainly most of the professional investors focus on what the stock is likely to do in the next year or two. And they have all kinds of, all kinds of uh, uh, arcane... Uh, 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 methods of, of, of approaching that, but uh, uh, they do not really think of themselves as owning a piece of a business. The, the real test of whether you're investing from a value standpoint or not is whether uh, you care whether the stock market is open tomorrow. Uh, if you're making a good investment in a security, it shouldn't bother you if they close down the stock market for five years. It, all the ticker tells me is the price, yeah. and I can look at the price occasionally to see whether the price is outlandishly cheap or outlandishly high, but but prices don't tell me anything about a business. Business, uh, business figures themselves tell me something about a business, but the price of a stock doesn't tell me anything about a business. I would rather value a stock or a business first and not even know the price so that I'm not influenced by the price in establishing my valuation and then look at the price later to see whether it's way out of line with what my value is. My God, you know what? It's so amazing to listen to this, right? Uh, as investors, we always focus on the price, um, including me, right? I mean, so many times we look at the price and we get influenced by the price movement. But Warren clearly tells us that the moment we look at a business uh, as a piece of a business, owning uh, a piece of a business, and uh, then it doesn't matter whether the crowd agrees with you or disagrees with you, because then we can take an independent view. Okay, so I think what he's trying to say is value versus price. Okay, amazing. 
So Buffett chose to stay in this world, Omaha, Nebraska, where corn grows just minutes from downtown. Now, Omaha is a nice town, but nobody claims it's a world financial center. Here, the only thundering herd is actually on four feet. Don't you find Omaha a little bit off the beaten track for the investment world? Well, believe it or not, uh, we get mail here, and uh, we get periodicals, and we get all the facts needed to make decisions. And unlike Wall Street, you'll notice we don't have 50 people coming up and whispering in our ear that we should be doing this or that this afternoon. You appreciate the lack of stimulation I like, here? I, I like the lack of stimulation. We get facts, not stimulation here. <laughs> How can you stay away from Wall Street? Well, if I were on Wall Street, I'd probably be a, a, a lot poorer. At, uh, uh, you get overstimulated in Wall Street, and uh, uh, you hear lots of things, and and you, you may you may shorten your focus, and a short focus uh, is not conducive to uh, to long profits. And uh, here I can just focus on what businesses are worth, and I don't need to be uh, in Washington to figure out what the Washington Post uh, newspaper is worth, and I don't need to be in New York to figure out what uh, some other company is worth. It's 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 simply it's an intellectual process, well, and, the, and the less the less static there is in that intellectual process, really the better off you are. What is the intellectual process? The intellectual process is, is defining your level, defining your area of competence in valuing businesses, and then within that area of competence, finding whatever sells at the, at, at the cheapest price in relation to value. You know what? Uh, one thing I could take away from this was uh, Omaha was a very small town. Uh, most of us are in small, small cities, small, small towns, right? But today we have information all across. We have annual reports. We have all the information. So isn't it so much easier for us to study sitting wherever we are in whichever part of the world and ensuring that we are able to study and understand the business? That's number one. Second thing, uh, Warren says that if he was in the Wall Street, then probably he would have been far poorer. Uh, if I If I want to relate that to today's context, it's probably that we are the age of, age of social media. There is so much of noise, but then you have to filter it out. The more the noise, the more the actions. So if at all we need to be inactive, then probably we need to shut down from all the noise, filter out, and then probably we can become better investors. And there are all kinds of things I'm not competent to value. But what? there are a few that I am competent to value. Have you ever bought a technology company? No, I really haven't. In 30 years of investing, not one? I haven't understood any of them. <laughs> so you haven't ever owned, for example, IBM? Which Never owned IBM. Great, Marvelous great. company. I mean, a sensational company, but I haven't owned IBM. Okay, so this was probably three and a half decades back. Uh, it's amazing that Warren is one of uh, a large shareholders of a technology company called Apple now. So that clearly shows us that there's nothing wrong in increasing our circle of competence, in expanding our circle of competence over a period of time. And that's one of my biggest takeaways from this, the circle of competence can be this much, but over the years, we can slowly expand the circle of competence and we can also figure out which parts of which sectors really do not fit in our circle of competence. And so here is this uh, technological revolution going on and you're not gonna be it's a participant. Gone right past me. Is that all right with you? It's okay with me. <laughs> Arthur, I, don't have to, I don't have to make money in every game. I mean, I don't know what cocoa beans are gonna do. I don't, you know, I, I, there are all kinds of things I don't know about, and that may be too bad, but, uh, you know, why should I know all about them? I haven't worked that hard on them. In the securities business, you literally every day have thousands of the major American corporations offered to you uh, at a price and a price that changes daily, and you don't have to make any decisions. You have to make, uh, the, nothing is forced upon you, so you, there are no called strikes in the business. The pitcher just stands there and throws balls at you. And uh, if you're playing real baseball and it's between the knees and the shoulders, you either swing or you got a strike call on you. If you get too many call on you, you're out. In the securities business, you sit there and they throw uh, U.S. Steel at 25 and they throw General Motors at 68 and you don't have to swing at any of them. They may be wonderful pitches to swing at, but if you don't know enough, you don't have to swing. And you can sit there and watch thousands of pitches and finally you get one right there where you want it, something that you understand, and then you swing. And uh, So you might not swing for six months. You might not swing for two years. Isn't that boring? It would, it would bore most people, and, and certainly boredom is a, is, a, is a problem with most professional money managers. If they, if they, if they try to sit out an inning or two, not only do they get somewhat antsy, but their clients are start, yelling, they start yelling, swing you bum, you know, from the, from the stands, and that's very tough for people to do. Warren, you're, you're a... Okay, you know what? It's, it's so awesome that, you know, today we have so many listed companies and then uh, 
many times what happens is we own a stock and except our stock, all the other stocks are running, right? Uh, how many of you have experienced this, right? I think most of us have experienced this. And uh, it's so awesome that end of day, a person like Warren Buffett, right? Uh, or Warren Buffett, he, um, he swings so rarely is what he says, right? Uh, and I think only a true owner can really do that. We can't own all the businesses in the world. We just own some good businesses and wait for them to probably perform at some point of time. But the earnings are so key. Okay, that's my take. Approach seems so simple. Why doesn't everybody do it? Well, I think partly because it is so simple that uh, the academics, for example, focus on on uh, um, all kinds of variables. Partly uh, by because academics, you mean uh, professors of right, finance? Right. Yeah. The, the and data business, is there. in business school. Sure. The, and the data is there. So they focus on whether if you buy stocks on Tuesday and sell them on Friday, you're better off, or if you buy them in election years. Uh, and, and sell them in other years, you're better off, or if you buy small companies, there are all these variables because the data are there. And, and they've learned how to manipulate data. And as a friend of mine says to a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And once you have these skills, you just are, are, are dying to, uh, uh, to utilize them in some way, but they aren't important. Uh, if I were being asked to participate in a business opportunity, would it make any difference to me whether I bought it on a Tuesday or a Saturday or an election year or something? It's not what a businessman thinks about in buying businesses. So why think about it when buying stocks? Because stocks are just pieces of business. Welcome back. You know what? Uh, I think it was fun watching this. So just before you end the video, right? I just thought uh, it'd be nice if uh, all of us as a homework, right? Can put down our comments uh, in this particular video. All right. Uh, what are our biggest learnings? What are our biggest learnings in this particular video? If you can just put down. I'll put down my learnings as well. Okay. That's something that I... Would love to do and as long-term investors i think that uh, you know it's amazing to own a business rather than looking at the price every single day okay that has been one of my biggest biggest takeaways here all right so uh, friends uh, if you think that this kind of video uh, brought some value i can do more such videos where we can watch something together and then we can kind of have uh, you know a heart to heart connection on watching this particular piece all right uh, if you really like this video, please give a nice like, okay? Because the moment you press that like button, I think the YouTube algorithm makes sure that a lot of other people also can watch this video and then take benefit from it, okay? So great then, uh, I'll be waiting for your comments and uh, my email is always open, right? Uh, my email will be there in the description. Just send me any kind of thoughts, whatever you feel, please send it across to me. No stock specific stuff and no recommendations, nothing, right? It's just pure discussions. And then uh, we'll have a great time together. Okay. All right, then. See you next time. Take care. Bye bye.